kilometers. The subterranean spaces. A diameter of two to three kilometers. Life from somewhere has chosen this almost like an airport. From feet up to navel, it's a fully developed male form, but on top of it, it's all translucent. The problem was he could enter the solar system only at certain times. They want me minus my body. It would be nice one day to step in and see what the hell. From here on, whatever I speak is just conjecture and legend. We're not hundred percent of sure of anything that I say from now on. We're just looking at it. <clears throat> One thing is clear here, this we are hundred percent sure is there's a tremendous amount of activity in the lake. And this activity is… the nature of the activity is such that it has nothing to do with anything that we know as life on this planet. It's something totally different. It's life, but not the way we know it. I wouldn't call Manasarovar a spiritual place because Spirituality is out of human being. These beings, if you can call them that, I don't know what we can call them, whether we can call them beings or things or creatures or what, we have no words for things or happenings which don't belong to our realm of experience. They don't belong to anything that we know as life. So for now, due to lack of words, we'll call them beings. Their nature is nothing to do with who we are and what we are, on this level at least. So this is not really a spiritual place, but somehow life from somewhere has chosen this almost like an airport. They're just landing, taking off, landing, taking off at a tremendous pace. This is just crazy. This doesn't stand to any reason. Why for millions of years one particular spot on the planet has been used by life which doesn't belong here? Why? And why the same place? And why for so long? Why Kailash has always been considered as the abode of many great beings is because many great beings chose to deposit their work, preserve their work in Kailash. Starting from Shiva himself, and the first of the Tirthankars. And two of greatest Buddhist teachers, all these people chose Kailash Parvat as a place to preserve their work. When I say preserving work, for most mystics on this planet, till now, in all these thousands of years, if they get to share one or two percent of their work with people around them, they are very fortunate. Most of them don't even get to do that. 
So they always chose to deposit in some space which is not too frequented by human beings. At the same time, it's accessible for those who wish to go. So Kailash is such a place. It is not totally inaccessible, but it's hard enough to discourage a lot of people. There are many, many places like that. But in terms of the volume and the variety that's been deposited in Kailash, it is the place. So this is why it is known as the abode of Shiva, not because if you dig in the rock somewhere you will find him, because everything that he knew has been deposited there in a certain energy form. So, all that is valuable for us in his life, from his life, is here. So in that sense, he's alive here. He's still living here because in an energy form, he's alive. Many beings are alive there. But it, you should not go about imagining because the first thing that happens to people who go to Kailash and Manasarovar and Kami is they looked up in the sky, you see that? Shiva and Parvati. <laughs> Don't miss the bull. <laughs>
So he became a Ganapati, the chief of the Ganas. Somewhere down the line, artists from Shivakasi in Tamil Nadu, because they had never seen a Gana but the place was full of elephants, a boneless limb means they could not imagine beyond an elephant. So they slowly made that into an elephant. Whatever they do even today, everybody calls it only Ganapati. Nobody calls him Gajapati, okay? He's Ganapati. He is the king or the leader or the chief of Ghanas.